Ladies and gentlemen, I am back from break, vacation, whatever you want to call it, 4th of July weekend for those who live in the U.S. and celebrate 4th of July. I hope yours was as good as it was for me. It was just really nice to see friends and family again. But in other news, let's talk about PlayStation and indie developers who were recently spotlighted by indies who were frustrated by PlayStation due to their poor support, poor communication, just general lackluster way of handling indie developers. And of course, as soon as the story broke, PlayStation defenders immediately went out of their way to try to excuse all of this, saying, well, you know, if your game doesn't get promoted by PlayStation, that's probably garbage and doesn't deserve the promotion. And that's, you know, first of all, I don't think it's a great thing to say, but it's also missing the point entirely. The point is, PlayStation doesn't offer the most basic of support to indie developers, support that other platforms do, and things that any platform should offer to their developers to make the process of releasing games and allowing them to have some semblance of seeing success just as streamlined as possible. And this was all kickstarted by tweets by Ian Garner, who talked about how there's no ability to manage games for indie devs on Platform X, which is basically PS5, how developers have to jump through hoops, beg and plead for any level of promotion. All that matters is PlayStation's evaluation in terms of what kind of promotion or what kind of support your game gets and the evaluation in terms of how that's done. No information offered there. For steps three and four listed here for releasing your game on PlayStation, you have to essentially go through an account manager, but there's no way to know how exactly to get an account manager, no way to know what resource level you've been assigned, cannot even do launch discounts without their approval. Platform X or PS5 or PlayStation owners will always get the worst deal as a result because it's just easier to discount games on other platforms, especially on Steam where developers essentially have full autonomy. And I hear with Nintendo, it's also actually kind of similar on that front. And Xbox, it's also not too difficult. Uh, the fees, like $25,000 to get any sort of featuring. And because they don't give you any data on whether that featuring actually boosted game sales, no way to know if that $25,000 or up to $200,000 even was well spent. Discounts, in terms of if you actually want to discount, your games are invite only. And those invites are very limited. So that means that games... Indie games have spent years without being able to be discounted, even if developers have wanted to, and other very popular devs have had the same experience. No idea how to succeed on this platform, and they won't tell me. Other developers also spoke out and echoed what Ian said. So Matthew White here showed a chart showing that the PlayStation platform is by far their worst selling one. And it has to do with that lack of proper support and just the general lackluster searchability and findability of games, if that's a word. Scrolling down, he, you know, also spotlights a couple of issues like just awful communication. Average email responses are in months, not days or weeks, which slows down the pipeline of getting things done. Eight months to get development kits for PlayStation hardware, whereas with Nintendo and Xbox, generally indie developers have been saying it's a lot quicker. Internal chaos with messages coming from random teams at random times, lack of coordination behind the scenes, impossible to plan launch support as a result. PS5 featuring and placement is a giant mystery. Again, PlayStation just decides which indie games want to feature and which ones they don't. And it just makes the those indie gems that are up and coming that much more difficult to find on PlayStation specifically, which is why the sales tend to be lower on that platform. Ragnar here mirrors our experience exactly. Uh, Jay Tholen, PlayStation sucks for indie devs. And finally, Mike Rose, devs are too worried to say it publicly even because they don't want to burn bridges with PlayStation. Also, you know, you've got those hardcore defenders who are excusing all of this and just, you know, backlashing at those indie devs who are just trying to make things better for everyone, including for the customers, really, if you think about it. That brings us to more developers who have spoken out since. Let's begin with this Kotaku article whose headline reads, PlayStation is hard to work with. Devs say, while Microsoft and Nintendo are far from perfect, Sony makes their lives more difficult. This is the main point. On all other platforms, it's a lot easier to work with the platform holders. It's just Sony specifically where indie developers are experiencing many issues, and maybe not everyone, but enough where clearly Sony needs to make some changes. And so, scrolling down here, information about just how much worse it is for indies to work with Sony than Microsoft or Nintendo keeps piling in. 
Again, it is basic stuff. Oh yeah, so there is a Nintendo who supports you, Microsoft who supports you, and then there's Sony who supports its own AAA machine and gives a fuck about everyone else, said one indie dev who wished to remain anonymous. And that kind of harkens back to an article we read from Jason Schreier back here about how the priority is big blockbusters. And here's the article in question from back in April 9th, 2021. Sony's obsession with blockbusters is stirring unrest within PlayStation Empire. I covered this way back when. And while it's not that they aren't willing to try new ideas, the... Premise is essentially that if a game isn't an immediate success, if an IP isn't an immediate hit, then that's done and they have to move on to the next thing that has the potential to become a blockbuster. And this focus means they've also shifted attention away from indies that aren't blockbusters either. And so essentially indies that have that potential to become the next big thing, they're less likely to be found on PlayStation and they may just be lost in the sea of other titles. Another indie publisher said, Sony does not understand what indie means, not at all. For them, indie is something in the lower million budgets. And if something doesn't meet that blockbuster criteria, it's just something that PlayStation isn't interested in nourishing to potentially make it, you know, a blockbuster. Another publisher said, no platform is great, but Sony is particularly terrible. And that's one thing to note. It's not that Xbox and Nintendo are perfect. It's just Sony is so much worse for indies. They know it too. They've had a problem for a long time and they've been telling devs they have a problem for a long time, but they've just never fixed anything. So the problem persists. And then there is the issue of the minimum $25,000 and up to $200,000 to get your game featured on the blog, which barely anyone reads, or get it uploaded on PlayStation's official YouTube channel to potentially garner views there. But beyond the fee being exorbitant for indie developers for who $25,000 is a big deal for them because they're not AAA developers, there's also the issue of this being pretty much the only way to find new indie titles on PlayStation. With Xbox and Nintendo, for example, even if you don't promote your game through them, the way they've set up their shop and the interface allows you to find brand new indie titles. So here's what a developer or an indie dev said. We get people every week saying, saw your game on the Xbox dashboard. Uh, and this is from a publisher of small indie titles. The Xbox UI feels like a mess, but in reality, it's actually kind of interesting that they just have so many different places and spaces to feature games. As for Nintendo, here's what that same publisher said. Without paying for featuring, there are spots on the eShop you will appear without paying. New releases, great deals, all those kinds of lists, and they will put new releases and decent discounts into the Discover tab too. And I can confirm this. As a Switch user, there is a tab for new releases, and it'll feature just about anything that's newly released, and you can check those out out and discover new games that way, PlayStation just lacks something along those lines, making discoverability that much less efficient and that much more difficult. And then Kotaku highlights sales numbers and how PlayStation, for a lot of indie devs, consistently sells worse than on other platforms, 0.3% on PlayStation. And then here's another breakdown, 20,000 copies on Xbox, only 7,000 on PlayStation. And then when releasing DLC, the contrast was much more stark. 2,000 units of DLC sold on Xbox, whereas on PlayStation, just seven, a vast difference in sales numbers. And clearly there's just something off about how Sony's handling things, especially when you consider that there are more place, way more PlayStation consoles out there than Xbox, PS4, for example, 100 plus million units, Xbox, you know, I think only half that, less than half that, I believe. And yet on Xbox, it's selling significantly better for not just one indie dev, but for a myriad of indie devs Clearly, there's an issue there. And these numbers, again, reflect just how hard it is to find games on PlayStation if they're not heavily featured and how incredibly difficult it is to be featured in PlayStation sales. Here's another quote from an indie publisher. If your store doesn't have a place where players can find new interesting games and you have to literally use the search functionality to find a game, then why the fuck is anyone giving them 30%? Once again, another indie dev mentions, go try to find my game on PlayStation without typing in the specific name, whereas on Xbox and Switch, Immediately, obvious sections devoted to new releases and whatnot, making it easy to find brand new games. Another way indie devs can push sales for their games is discounts, but as far as PlayStation goes, that's where things get very limited. Again, it's invite only, and 
developers aren't able to manage that on their own. They have to go through this entire pipeline on the back end. That's very inefficient. It's the worst, said an indie publisher. You can only get invited to promotions these days. You cannot set up custom discounts anymore. No publisher developer sales. And these invites are freaking insane. They propose usually something around 40 to 50% by default, and you have to make a counter proposal. So they're saying you have to do a discount that is in the 40 to 50% range. You can't do 10 or 20%. And with counter proposals, this publisher said they usually aim for 30% and don't try to go for 20 or 10 because PlayStation has the ability to reject discounts that are n that don't go far enough, which I think is ridiculous. If somebody just wants to discount their game by 20%, they shouldn't be afraid to do that, you know, on the off chance that that discount percentage may be rejected because somebody else is controlling all that instead of the developer themselves. Just insanity. With the same time on other platforms, if you're trying to go for a stable privacy policy, God, it just ruins the strategy and it is frustrating. And one area where Microsoft and Nintendo exceed PlayStation as far as indie developer support goes, and this seems to be relatively a universal claim, is better communication. It helps every part of the process, says one indie publisher, specifically highlighting how Microsoft's responses are very quick and how Microsoft repeatedly invited indie developers to sales, making the process simple, and they're just much more loose about invitations and allowing developers to quickly do discounts. Another publisher said, heck, Microsoft invites you to shows. They not only invite you if you are already popular, they try to invite quality games no matter if you know them already. And Game Pass, Game Pass is a thing and it offers good value. One of the advantages of Game Pass from what I've heard is that people who would normally not try out certain games will try them on Game Pass first and then maybe become fans of them and that will generate a new audience for games that otherwise would not have been discovered. But beyond that, Microsoft isn't just focused on the indie devs that are already popular, they're also focused on maybe indie devs that are unknown that have and show a lot of promise and potential. One indie publisher especially praised Nintendo, while it is highlighted generally that both on Microsoft and Nintendo consoles, indie developers have just a better experience than on PlayStation with Nintendo specifically, a respected indie publisher told Kotaku this, crazily enough, Nintendo finally listened after many years and now provide some of the best tools for devs to actually control their game. If you're more antiquated than Nintendo on something, you're doing something wrong. So we can just drop a discount on Switch for our games whenever we want. At any discount level we want, it's completely in our control as it should be. Steam is the only other platform that allows that. So as far as indie support goes and discounts and uh, developer autonomy goes, Nintendo's actually ahead of the curve, which is uh, really interesting to hear. And he once again details what Nintendo offers that allows indie games to be discovered, both small and large. New releases, great deals, all those kinds of lists on the eShop, and they will put new release and decent discounts into the Discover tab too. It's at least discovery methods, and we end up selling decent numbers on Switch because people can actually find our games, which, yeah, I mean, that's pretty sound logic right there. If you want to dive further into this, there are two other articles worth checking out. One is this one right here from Push Square, whose headline reads, Report How PlayStation is Failing Indie Developers. I don't want to go through all this because a lot of it is just generally similar sentiments as expressed by Kotaku, but it's Push Square's own sources once again discussing limitations in terms of developer autonomy, lack of communication, all the things highlighted in the Kotaku article. And IGN, which is obviously one of the bigger outlets out there, also spoke to indie developers and published this article, Why Indie Publishers Are Fed Up With PlayStation. So we have different articles who spoke to a variety of different sources, various indie developers and publishers, all basically saying the same thing. At this point, I think it's very clear that there's clearly an issue with PlayStation's indie developer backend pipeline, and I think it is important to encourage PlayStation to make things better because indie devs really are the future of gaming, and these indie developers are the ones who eventually grow to become the future AAA developers, and we want to support these indie devs in the hopes that they can make some incredible games down the pipeline. And with PlayStation especially being the most popular platform, to encourage further sales on that platform, 
PlayStation clearly needs to overhaul how they handle indie developers. Now, an aspect of it does seem to be, according to Jason Schreier, that something he learned is that PlayStation support team for indies is severely understaffed because clearly for Sony, indies are just not as big of a priority, or at least the non-blockbuster indies just aren't that much of a priority, which I think is a short-sighted way of looking at indie developers. Look at something like Among Us. That game was basically nothing on nobody's radar until two years after after launch until a streamer discovered it and happened to stream it and everyone else picked up on it and suddenly among us this indie game that was very low key that nobody knew about became the next big thing and people realized how fun this game was. We have learned over the years that indie games have just as much potential to shine bright and to sell tons of copies and to get great reviews and to see immense success as AAA developers and AAA games can. So I hope Sony really does see this and emphasize more support for indies and staff the indie support team better so they can keep up with them and just overhaul the systems that'll allow them to just keep in touch and just allow them to do basic things without having to go through an entire long-term process that will ultimately limit their sales and their discoverability. Or at least that's one man's take on this whole situation. Let me know in the comments below what you think about these additional articles that have come out over the past few days, highlighting the woes that indie developers have expressed when working with PlayStation versus Xbox and Nintendo, who have seemingly, while not perfect, done a much better job handling indies share your thoughts below and to be further updated on all things gaming news reviews and discussions stay tuned right here on young yeah i'll see you guys next time young out